Ah, here we go. Here we are. Some people laugh at that, at the Isle of Man film logo, yeah. don't they? Some people Maybe. laugh at just the Isle of Man and logos. <laughs> as you, you know, that's why we started it with that. Yeah. You've got a pop shield on your microphone, I notice, and I haven't. Oh, uh, well, that could cause, let's see if that causes any problems. <coughs> you don't, you're not very plosive with your pops. You, you spit enough. a lot when you talk. I do, yeah. That's why you need warm-up exercises as actors, as is being displayed by Richard Thorncroft. And that was a lovely bit of work you just displayed there, <coughs> not tailing into the film. I did all these, uh, um, these were all from my drama school, these Susie's. I thought Susie's you said all shots. these shots. I did all these shots. I directed this film. <laughs> uh, these are, you, this is your research then, or not research, it's your life. Yeah, this is sort of my life as an actor, mm. pervade through you. Yeah, yeah, I'm your sort of puppet. This you. was a pickup. I, ne I never thought. I thought they were going to put something on this green screen. Yeah. And then, then sort of never happened. <laughs> yeah. Very strong. Yes. Very strong. Um. Okay. I have read the script. Something like this. Did you enjoy this moment? I did. Essie Davis, there, gorgeous. She's great, Essie. Yep. She was amazing. Fantastic. We wrote a really quite a bad part, and she <laughs> just uh, <laughs> she made it really good. But don't open your mouth when you kiss me. Bit of a Dutch there. The Dutch was, um, why did I do a Dutch? Yeah, why did you come into the Dutch? Where did that occur? I think it was just, we were rehearsing and I was too boring as me. And then Sean mm. went, can you do any, can you be funny? Yeah. <coughs> and I went, only 12% more funny. Only if I do a stupid kind of accent. But I'm not good, um, that's a good way to, uh, like as you say, um, it's a good way to do it. You don't. What you work from the inside out. Don't I you? work from I the, work from the, the outside what's known as the human soul. Um, what's that? Exactly. And you work from <laughs> like a, a, a sort of thing, like a voice or a funny yeah. wig. Yeah. Well, I'm trained, you see. So. Yeah. Yeah. Trained. Okay, let's go. You were trained in the streets. I, I was know, yeah, I more of a hard knock, sort of living on the street, where you had to fight for your life uh, with yeah. theatrical work back in the day. People would the, stab you if you didn't do monologues and stuff. <laughs> Yes. Here we go, the credits. Yes. So these were, um, we shot these years ago, didn't we? Before the Before main the body film, of the yeah. This was in the like 80s. a teaser. Yeah, we, we made a teaser before we made the film in order to try and tell people that we knew what we were doing. Yeah, and to demonstrate that we could make you know, something like this. And despite that, <laughs> they let us make the... Yeah, and this was the sort of thing that got initially got us excited. Uh, the Isle of Man. And the idea of making a sort of terrible show that uh, yeah that shot was was there was a lot of argument about that shot wasn't there there was it was seen as a bit too much but mm. i remember sean going sometimes more is more richard thorncroft is an actor on the crest you look really good here i always think you, you look you look really nice and you don't know uh, i look stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that no, was a uh, shot. that was a good. That yeah. was a TR7. That's Mackenzie Crooks TR7 from yes. uh, the Detectorists. But we changed the car when we got a bit of money. Did you do much capoeira training? I did some training. Yeah, I did a day with well, a day, a couple of hours with. So you really put the, <laughs> your all into it, didn't you? It's a couple of hours with a with a uh, an official uh, capoeira guy. He seemed yeah. quite. Um, he was very nice, but he I don't think he was quite uh, happy with the amount of work I was putting into it. I was mm. trying to explain it was a comedy and I didn't yeah. need to be able to do it that well but uh, yeah. you know, uh, this chap Steve Coogan Yeah, Steve was uh, very uh, very good, he came uh, came and got involved and uh, gave us his uh, Blessing. Yeah. <laughs> he gave us a few good ideas as well. He did. We had a day of uh, work on the film with him. And yeah. He's very good with uh, ideas. Gave us a few lines. Well, we'll try and think of some as we come along. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You're act acting. We wanted to get Wogan. Originally, we were going <clears> to <throat> intercut this with Wogan, but um, Wogan refused to let us uh, use... Yes. Uh, his image and his voice. And then he died. And then um, two days later he yeah, died. Very so sad. I don't want to... Uh, no. But obviously it was nothing to do with the fact that it was... I mean, the last thing... But his last did. his last act was to deny us... Uh, yeah, if there's one thing I want to do before I die, it's to not let... Don't it, let <laughs> those bastards use my image! <laughs> and then he went... Because he, as in his later life, he became German. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh... 
the different weathers on display there. You saw it was sunny, mm. and then it was raining, and now it's foggy. And that's the Isle of Man. If you don't like the weather, wait wait oh, two minutes. That's what they said. Yeah. Um, and and uh, uh, it's quite a lot of fog inside the house in yeah. this scene as well. Well, this was shot <laughs> inside this house, wasn't it? And it, it shouldn't really have been. It should have been a studio or something because it was really hard to film in, in the house because it was sort of too small. Yeah. Plasticine joke there. One of the sort of first laughs of the film. Um, yeah. The bread bin. I always thought that was a funny idea to have a phone in the bread bin, but you don't. You don't really. No one really noticed that. <coughs> no, <laughs> I never knew that was a. No, it was, it was sort of a joke. Yeah, it made me laugh oh, when okay. I wrote it down. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Never again. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. David Schofield here. David Schofield. for Robin Morrissey, fantastic actors. Yeah. Or, David Schofield was um, in American Way Off in London for film buffs. He was the yeah. guy who went, You made me miss the board! Yeah. In that famous scene. And we thought it'd be a good hard man, a bit frightening. And, and that was right, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's very frightening in real life. <laughs> he's uh, got a great face. All ADR in, in this scene. Because they couldn't get the boom into the room, it was so small. Mm. I think it was on the menu at my local Indian restaurant. One of my favourite jokes that never really gets a laugh. But. Peter Francis did uh, set design on this, which was a bit of a field Amazing. day. Look at all these. Creating the, uh, we got the tiny minutes. effigies of okay. myself, which I have now. You kept all them, didn't you? I've got a room in my house which is just filled with tiny versions of myself. Mm. And I go in there sometimes and we... <laughs> <laughs> That's where you're going to be found <laughs> dead. Hanging. Aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, when it, when it all goes Richard Thorncroft. <laughs> uh, that door, I love it that goes. door. Yeah, I mean, I think we're only ever a couple of uh, bad decisions away from Richard Thorncroft. Yeah. You know, it's not... It's not it's this is you in your prime, isn't it? This is You had to get in shape for this. You actually shaved your head. That was Yes, I shaved my head and I'd been on... Just a, for this shot? Quite a hellish diet for a long... For a good couple of decades. What, a actually. diet putting weight on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just putting on weight, mm. and really bulking up. Cause is, that, is that a diet? Is it called a diet? Um, it, it is a diet. diet yeah, it is a diet. No, it's very, very much a diet, yeah. It's, a, it's a, the diet of a, of a professional of a professional actor, um, uh, who takes his work seriously, yeah. Mm, gre a greedy there man. There you go, I mean, that, and that's where it pays off right there. Um, <sighs> Did you push that out, or is that your, is that real belly? Or is it a um, bit of... It's a bit of both, yeah. But, yeah. A, bit, a little bit of both. Richard oh, great. This scene is interesting because I remember I remember the morning you came in and went, oh, why didn't you, you should do an audition? And you mm. verbatim did this whole scene and went, and it's Kenneth Branagh. And, mm. and then five minutes later you went, well, that shit, cut it, cut it. <laughs> and I fought with you for the next three years to put it back in. <laughs> yes. And you kept going, we've got to cut that out. Sometimes oh. ideas come and you, because they they don't take too long to come, you, you doubt them, you start thinking, well, it mm. can't be good because it just sort of... But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good to be able to mm. argue back and forth about <laughs> whether something should be... I mean, we had a, it was a while, wasn't it, getting uh, getting this together? Yeah. I mean, we wrote a draft quite soon, but then it was a was quite a few uh, years of... Uh, tinkering. Tinkering and re-presenting drafts. Mm. And, like and we had to meet someone who knew Kenneth Branagh. Before it could have happened, yeah. Um, so that was a long wait. Then we met Sean, and Sean introduced us to Kenneth, and yeah. that was it. Look at you're in your element here, aren't you? Mm. Working with Kenny, what was that like? It was great, actually. Um, yeah, this is real hatred coming off Ken, um, because he didn't like me, yeah, and, yeah. and he made it very plain. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't. You kept trying to talk to him, and he kept sort of brushing you off. Didn't he? <laughs> this um, is all real. So now we've done a scene together, Ken. Um, I really hope we can hang out. That's what I said to him after this, and uh, we've never seen him since. But um, no, this is the last we ever saw of him. Yeah. Who was that? Not a fucking clue. Delivered that very well. Yeah. Brother. Hey, brother. <laughs> That's a real story of an actor who <laughs> did that. Yeah. But we can't name names. We can't name names about who that was. Yeah. But he was. Uh, he was a, a well-known actor. And this, was this, this was a scene. I I always had this salad. I always really liked the idea of with with Simon. It's Simon salads, it's bread bins. It's often <laughs> it's often food-based stuff <laughs> that really gets them going. It's really all cooking. about it's really all about food. It's like the James Bond books. They're all about food. <laughs> the Ian Fleming books. Yeah, they, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Dining, fine dining. It's all about Bond tucked into a salad. <laughs> maybe that's um, yeah. yeah. He, he actually ate twenty-seven of these salads. And that that's amazing. That's dedication. Yeah. Yeah. 
He didn't have to do that at all. And that was Rocket, so it was, it was very pungent, very peppery. Mm. Mm. Simon Street, could you just give us a few minutes? He kept, um, he was really into this colour, wasn't he? And he kept putting in swear words. We can't even say some of the swear words. Do you remember? He kept yeah, yeah, yeah. In. Yes, he really loved that. Um, and then we ended up cutting, pulling back on some of that. Yeah. Um, Harry Walter was incredible. Um, yeah. What's happening with my autobiography? Are there any takers? Any bites? Very quiet time, in fact, is autobiography. There is this the listening in. I always like that idea. Don't quite. Do people get I think they get it. So he's listening, he's listening in. in. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe the glass is. Yeah, the glass. Know, the glass it, it, wasn't expecting it to be sort of in that weird in a, glassy. Yeah, in a sort of set from Blake 7. <laughs> <laughs> Often you don't know what's going to till you turn up and you go, what's this? And you go, this is, um, yeah. This is where we're filming it, mate. This is where we're filming. <laughs> Thromby <laughs> socks. Oh. And that is not a sentence I thought I'd ever utter. Well, about Thromby socks. What? Right, they've gone in a different direction. This is the first. John Nettles. John Nettles plays a big part. I wonder if John Nettles has seen this film. Interesting to know. Um, hmm. Whether he has, and uh, I heard he, do, he doesn't go to cinemas anymore, so maybe not. Maybe, he he'll, not? maybe he'll get it on the DVD. He's probably listening to this now, going, "Jesus Christ!" Mm. What? So this is a what, voiceover or something? Thanks, John, if you are listening. It's, uh, yeah, you're an inspiration you, to me and Simon. I mean, especially yeah. Simon. Simon was a was a big Bergerac fan. Huge Bergerac fan. Um, I was more of a Six Million Dollar Man. This fan. is what this, what this yeah. film is: is a cross between Bergerac and the Six Million Dollar Man. Yeah. Um, fused with you know with an actor. Yeah. Who did you base your your character on? No one really. I mean, it's you, isn't it? Uh, it's just me. Um, yeah, just me. <laughs> a sort of loser version of you. Uh, yeah, kind or, of. Or a better a, version sort of, of you. just me, basically, in uh, on an off day. Yeah. Uh, quite quite. You know, if you just sort of. I do not go backwards in my career. I move ever forwards. As Cleese says, uh, you got maybe your best con. Uh, comedy character is, is yourself without a sense of humour mm. which um, is yeah. a little bit like this chap uh, I can yeah. be a bit pretentious and a bit um, looks kosher to me um, yeah. yeah but you have a great sense of humour uh, luckily that's sometimes it, when that's not there though which is yeah which which is 90% of the day it's only there a couple of <laughs> couple of moments of the day and then you do it on well, like camera. when you're sleeping you can't no I can't be know. funny although some comedians can be funny when they're sleeping yeah um, Lee Mack is yes he sleeps he's hilarious very funny his wife can't, he has to go in a different room. <laughs> she just spends the whole time laughing. Noel's quite a funny sleeper, actually. <laughs> he makes weird noises, like a sort of badger. <clears throat> I imagine night. he makes a noise like a sort of kazoo. <laughs> or, or a harp, a juice harp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oing, oing, oing. They're these all your... This is That's you, isn't it? When that you is me, were, young. Um, yeah, there, there's some shots uh, of myself when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. This is one of our first sort of jokes, wasn't it? We always liked this idea of the jigsaw puzzle and all the mm, clippings. Because we had all these things, you know, a little memory box. A cupboard of regrets or a cupboard of dreams. A cupboard of we forgotten it, dreams. It, yeah. Isn't that a Bernard Hart song? Yeah. The cupboard of forgotten, cupboard of dreams. forgotten dreams. This is a classic scene. This scene we have sets must the have tone the for the whole the film. <laughs> Let's do the rest of that song. <laughs> Here we see Richard Thorncroft <laughs> wearing the boots of man. <laughs> Standing astride. These sunglasses represent the sun. The crown of man. Okay, sounds good. What about the newspapers? Uh, here we are with um, uh, Jeffrey Moncrief, uh, Richard McCabe, there who is. is Scottish. I mean, you can hear him doing his, but he's not, he didn't sound like that in real life. He's no. actually quite, quite well-spoken gentleman, you know. <laughs> I'm very, I'm Scottish. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, and you are you? He goes, oh yes. But he roughed up pretty well. Yeah. We went, we sort of uh, bonded over prog rock and his love of uh, prog rock. And so we thought the character would, uh, would be into that as well. Mm. Sort of playlist of tunes from, you know, back in the day. The mayor there. That joke there, that always gets, that always gets lost, that joke. Yeah. Because it comes off the back of the uh, wig. Yeah. People laugh over it. We really appreciate this. Andrew Riseborough, fantastic. She's a George, she's a Geordie, you know, Andrew Riseborough. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Ridley Scott, a Geordie you don't know was a Geordie. Yeah. Um, Robbie Morris, he was fantastic. Yeah. He's so sort of straight, isn't he? Policeman, look at this, watch this. 
Can you not just <laughs> deadpan? <laughs> He's brilliant. Yeah. I love him in this scene. Um, yeah, well, three years at Rada give a man some skills. Right. You're a fan of the show. It's one of my favourite little bits. This. Ah, woman of taste. <laughs> She's single. She's dead. She's dead. Good reaction there. Mm. Who's that in the end of the corridor? They're not there now. Interesting. Oh. Is there a oh, no, they're, there. Oh, they're back there. there. What, they're is there a cleaner well or something? Well done. Yes, yeah, a cleaner, yeah. Yeah. These are the things you, you sort of notice when you're doing the commentary, you know? Yeah. You going to be there the whole time, or...? That's right, yeah. yeah. good. Really good news. I'm going to be doing some meditating, so, um... You meditate? No. Something to think about. Thanks, yeah, I will. Sorry about your mum. <clears throat> that was a hotel on... What was the hotel was that? I can't remember the name. No. Yeah. It's one right on the front. They're all yeah. a bit like this. This is the best hotel. Yeah. In the Isle of Man. Yeah, I mean, what should we put those flowers there? Well, Peter did. I didn't, I didn't put them there. But. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did move the sort of set around the furniture. I did. Around. I tried to do that initially, and then I was told that's not, that's not really what I'm, what I'm employed to do. Manx TV. There is no, there is no Manx television, is there? I don't is know. I don't know. This is uh, that's um, set design, isn't it? Yeah, we were sort of uh, so sort of a school or something, wasn't it? Um, when we went to the Isle of Man to screen it, because we were initially thinking it was a, sh uh, you know, this was the Isle of Man's answer to Bergerac, and we like to think that the Isle of Man were were angry when Bergerac was in its heyday, and so we um, that's in a way was partly the idea of this imagining a a show that was made on the Isle of Man in answer to Bergerac, and apparently there was one made, which we found out when we, when we screened it at the. Uh, on the Isle of Man, someone said there was a show made on the Isle of Man at the time of Bergerac. What was he? He was Barry Bowser or something, but, wasn't it? But, no. Um, Baz Bovey? Baz Bovey, that was it. Baz Bovey. And so we've never seen it. We've, we're trying to track it down at the moment, someone. And, but I don't think it was ever broadcast or. No. Cause, we, um, we, there was a guy in the QA went, I, I, know, I knew Baz Bovey. Yeah. I, I was in it. I was murdered. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone knows of. You know, you can get a copy of Baz Bovey, the um, real Isle of Man detective. Do do let us know. Yeah, right. We'd love to see that. Maybe you've given up acting. Obviously, you didn't catch me on the last season of Midsummer Murders. That's what made me think you'd given up. <laughs> Midsummer Murders, Ow. Joe. <laughs> Ooh, you got me again, John Nettles. John's watching this. Jesus, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> yeah. It's not John. It's not John Nettles. Well, maybe catching the psychotic killer Paul Melly isn't a serious enough story for you. Did you move that plant there? Yeah. <laughs> you shifted all that around. <laughs> I like to work with um, foliage. Why don't we? This was day one. Do you remember this was first, this was first day? This was day one, yeah. yeah. First day, you put, just put your teeth in, got your wig on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Still got it. Still got it. Is these uh, goats are a, a theme of the film. Um, yeah, they, they sheep. Keep, keep an eye out for these uh, sheep. There's a few running motifs. You must have a running motif throughout the show. Or else the films need to have a sheep or goat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll point those out as they uh, as, as yeah. they as they come along. This is an old school, I think. Yeah, this is this is an old school. Quite a lot of. But this is in in in, in England. Isn't it? Yeah, this was um, a lot of Oxfordshire somewhere. An old disused sort of university school or something, which is used quite a lot in, usually in yeah. sci-fi films or post-apocalyptic horrors. Yeah, which this is. So coming up is David Schofield, who he had an interesting. Um, people always ask if there's improvising in the in the film, and there was a little bit, especially with sort of me and Julian, because we'd spent years with it, so we knew all the alternates, but. Um, David didn't like improvising, did he, really? You would well, sort of he, riff and then he would get really angry with you. Yeah, so this is, <laughs> is his real anger coming off David here to me. Um, mainly because I was sort of uh, bumbling around the lines and unfortunately not giving him his cues, which uh, was pretty bad. Well, that's just but unprofessional, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. I mean, so I, he had every right to. He did, you know, so he would be waiting for his, his cue line. Didn't he? Go, I remember you, you, finished, you finished a bit of improvising. And I finished a, a riff. There yeah. was a silence and then, yeah. he, and then you went... 
I said, uh, uh, it's, your, it's your line. I'm waiting for my cue. <laughs> you made me miss the board. You made me miss my cue. <laughs> I haven't missed my cue in 20 years. 20 years. He loves his music, David Scove. He's a real mu- yeah, music. Yeah, he was often playing music. his guitar in the uh, trailer. Um, mm. Like a sort of Johnny Cash song or, or something. He's really great, actually. He could go through drum solos as well. He would he'd give you... Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. He, no, he's yeah. a big muso. Lost his junction. Jeff. Richard! The cops have been a little bloody stingy with the <clears throat> policy. Ah, fuck. Yeah, so we're going to have to get the photographer to take the photos outside the building. It's very, it, it, like, Richard McCabe's great. And you always feel very anxious when you're watching him, because he's so sort of sweaty and yeah. sort of... Uh, it's sort of, he did on sweat a lot of, on the verge of sort of death. <laughs> that is amazing, amazing acting. He's actually teetotal. He's very, he's very, um, yeah. He's very, you know, straight these days. Yeah. But he's obviously been there, hasn't he? I think so. Yeah. It's probably yeah. D- d- delving into his his past. Yeah. This is one of the. This is one of the. Uh, we sort of wrote this scene and. It was almost in the, in the sort of very first draft, and it was sort of ring ring fenced. It was one of the few scenes we went. This is what it's sort of all about, really. The film. Yeah. If, if we do know what it's about, it's yeah. this sort of scene. These are good good extras here. Essays. Um, we always imagine this in slow motion. Thankfully, they turned the slow motion camera on that day. <laughs> and. Um, yeah. Ah, the old two-way mirrors. Two-way mirrors. This was on the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's a list of problems. What's nice is the little reflection of him turning, actually. That's sort of quite yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, this was the scene that we always... Uh, everything was threaded through this scene. Every alternate version of the script that we wrote went via this scene. So Even the one we set in space when we shifted we, it to We came back space. to Earth and had this scene. Then. We went, we've got to come back <laughs> and have this scene. Because otherwise people won't know what the film's about. Yeah. Um, great physical stuff. You're very, you're like Chaplin, you're like... <laughs> well, like Keaton old, Chaplin. Old Hardy, and, um, yes, there's a whole mix to... Uh, all all rolled into one. There. A little Jack Tatty. You know, yeah, a bit young. of Tatty in there. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, here's, here's a great line, we have to... Sh- find any manuka, honey. Oh. Two tea bags there? Yep, just like that. Here we go. Good little tip I picked up from Sean Bean. Double bag bean, we called him. The bean bag. That was your, that was your, I think that was... Yeah. Is that something you always... I you do say have that a lot. Two, well, you do have two bags. Right, yeah. I have two bags of, in my tea, yeah, I do. Um, and, uh, which I think I heard Liam Gallagher did. I think I was I'm not that I, I don't model my life on Liam Gallagher's you know, but yeah. it was one thing he said I, I have two tea bags and I just thought why don't I have two tea bags why am I always getting the wrong strength and mm. what's what's the shame of having two tea bags I think maybe growing up in the north you do have a bit of a shame my dad was quite sort of frugal the idea right. of putting two tea bags in it's a little have bit half a tea bag in it yeah you can re- make one tea bag last yeah, two days he would, he would reuse tea bags yeah, um so uh, yeah and I, I always felt slightly um like I was you know, going a bit far by having two tea bags or living mm. living beyond my means somehow. You know, you might want to try one four seven one. You would get some <laughs> funny looks sometimes if you have two tea bags. It's right? it's using Sean Bean. It's Bean. It's imagining Bean going. I want two tea bags <laughs> now, you bastard! <laughs> right, where and chucking it at a wall. And yeah, stuff. yeah. That's what it conjures to me in my <laughs> head. It conjures those that sort of image. Yeah, yeah. Bean's a yeah. I mean, I, I never. Well, I have met Bean once, pr- just in have passing. You? Just in passing, yeah. in, a, in a voiceover booth, something like yeah. that. <laughs> you will now, go, I hear you've been taking the piss out of me, yeah. saying I have two tea bags, don't even drink tea, I'm a coffee man. <laughs> We're all going to die, Kestrel, get over it. Some of the bang... That thing with the shoes, by the way, the shoes is a, another... Another running motif you may want to notice the is the shoes. are the motif of the character. The shoes are the soul of the character. They start in, from the ground. The and then they go up the body to the face. <laughs> that was something uh, an acting tutor of mine told me at uh, drama school. Uh, the shoes, once you find the shoes, you find the character. The shoes are the soul of the character, if you know what I mean. And we go, yeah, we, yeah, we do. We get that. Yeah, so, <laughs> S-O-L-E, S- yes, and I'll get it, yeah. Yeah, the... Um, I mean, it's weird because we were sending up the preciousness of actors, obviously. Uh, but you know, as an actor, you are prone to this sort of this 
ritualistic behavior and you want to hold on to little uh, talismans to, to give you the confidence because it is about confidence a lot of the time and you're standing up in front of a load of people whether it's in an audience or a load of cameras and people you you sort of need to f fool yourself into thinking it's it's all going to be okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> somehow i do anyway so e even on this i remember there was a scene where i was sh being shot from the waist up and i i didn't have my shoe proper shoes on and i did i said can i get my actual character shoes and they went no we're actually not we're not on your f legs and i was like yeah but i i need the shoes i realized at that point i disappeared up my own mind hole <laughs> and become Richard mind Thorncroft hole. become Thorncroft yeah which so yeah yeah that's okay no I, I understand that too I, yeah I yeah that. you feel different if, you, if you're wearing a pair of stilettos or something you feel different you do, than if yeah, you're wearing yeah. a soft loafer yeah. yeah you feel a different person I directed the scene <laughs> uh, just to let you know, I was there on set, and that Sean went, Did you? Sean went for a for a wee, and then yeah. and I went just roll, <laughs> and he came back and went, "That oh, looks pretty good, Simon." <laughs> I like these photographs on them on the mirror, but you've put them up there. The choice to, of you to put them up, yeah, is, yeah, is, is quite nice. Here he is, Toby. Russell Toby actually was the only one who <coughs> did a lot of research into how people on the Isle of Man actually speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, we sort of ignored that. But he went, yeah, they, they do it. It's like a northern thing. He's from Essex, isn't he? Yeah. So he was a real professional. Yeah. He was on a mini golf course, this actually. Uh, had a few shots uh, in between takes. Hey, you must have made quite an impression. There's police running about like headless chickens. The kestrel sound. Where did the kestrel sound come from? Well, that was just a... Um, he always had these sort of, you know... In these shows, you always had... Um, uh, you know, he's calling himself the Falcon. The yes. Falcon. I am the Falcon. Yeah. I will bury my talons into you, you know. Yes. You got these. They gave themselves sort of names, monikers, nicknames, monikers. and uh, yeah, usually animal sort of things. Um, yeah. Yeah, and he would be the getting badger. all this. The, uh, um, not wanting to spoil this, but I presume if you're listening to commentary, you've already watched it, or you're Unless a little you're, bit weird. You wouldn't. You wouldn't watch the first film time with the, the first commentary. Time like this. I always watch a film with the first time with the commentary, just so I get to know where the guys are going <laughs> and <laughs> know what they're thinking and, yeah. and, and little asides <laughs> and what they're talking about. But um, you know, he he would have looked at the um, the, the 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 annual for Mind Horn, the, the fan club that he was part of as a kid, and it will all be he would have been the, the Kestrel. He, he's got all his stuff from a. We don't know that as, in the film as, as yet, obviously, but it all sort of becomes evident mm. why he's behaving in this way. He's immersed himself in the world of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, the electric railway sign, we have to say, that, we, that was obviously, it looks like the Hollywood sign, but a slightly sort of naff version My of it. Guest is a That's why we liked that. Again, the foliage, I like to keep. Yeah, you, you um, shifted that around a few times, didn't you? Mm. We had to reshoot this because you weren't happy with where the foliage was. Mm. This is you, this is you at your best, isn't it? This is, this is the sort of perfect you. <laughs> oh, Richard Thorncroft, rather, <laughs> in his in his dreams. Yeah, yeah. We had lots of dream ideas, which um, ended up being too expensive and getting cut. And we had various things, didn't we, which would be fun to yeah. do at some point. But like kung fu fights between Sam, you know, Simon's character yeah. and mine, and various things that would have. Uh, Kenny fun. Kenny um, shaved his head for for this, didn't he? Yeah, he was really committed. He just went, whatever you want, guys. Whatever you're you the you're the stars. You you tell me what to do. Mm. With that audition, he changed the way. The this is Kenny improvising. He did. He did all this Ben Kingsley and uh, <laughs> Nelson Mandela materials. For me, yeah, he's great. Like Mandela, Ben Kingsley, and then there is Richard. Steamy. I am going to give you the best night's day you've ever. Little uh, glimpse of Nicholas Farrell. Mm. Uh, wonderful actor. <laughs> <laughs> such a great actor and all we got him to say basically was it's going to be a wonderful manx day yeah um 
He's in so many great films. I think he's in Greystoke. I was watching that really? recently. There's something like that. Yeah. This is uh, he's so <coughs> sweaty here, mm. McCabe, and he sort of dribbles a bit here in a sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. coke addle. I mean, look at that spittle. <laughs> and um, I like this smoking joke. It's just a little thing, but yeah. um, that someone wouldn't know that you can't smoke in hospitals. <laughs> <laughs> In so long, like lighting up on an aeroplane. What well, you can't, you can't do that now. <laughs> the last time he was on an aeroplane was when they made the show back in 1987. <laughs> Minge, Minge coming out of your ass. We had a few arguments, not arguments, but discussions about. Yeah. The language um, is quite crude. I'd love to see these shows. Yeah. You? Moonshaft and Nutmeg. We should good. make those as well. Yeah, you make sort of trailers for each one. Would Nutmeg is yeah, Druid detective. And he solved crimes with sort of joysticks and yeah, and he had a he didn't have a gun. He had some deadly nightshade or something that he would. Yeah, <clears throat> Moonshaft I think speaks for itself. A blind blind detective. Yeah. Um, well, then himself. Uh, mm, this is a bad idea, Jeff. Uh, Pete and I have a history. Things have been said. I mean, there was the Chinese detective, wasn't there? Do you remember that? Yeah. There was various shows from back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese detective. Uh, all those things, you know, Wycliffe. The guy. Uh, um, there was, there was uh, shoestring the private ear. He was a DJ detective. Shoestring was a DJ, and he lived on a barge, yeah, and he, he was into yeah. cartoons. They maybe over-egged it, didn't they? They did. He had about five things skills. that he did. Five non-detective skills. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should only really have one. Exactly. I think, like, you're a chef, part-time chef or something. Yeah, yeah. Flanger hoy, you see. It's a bit rude, but um, makes people... Made, made the sort of crew laugh, although... Ben Herzog said, if it makes the crew laugh, I cut it immediately. <laughs> if the crew enjoy anything I'm doing, I immediately stop. I know there and then it is terrible. Uh, <laughs> Here, here's the weather again. You notice it's raining now, uh, pouring down with rain, see? Uh, this is why we had to, it was all supposed to be <laughs> outdoors, this. But that's, um, there you go, raining now, and then... Uh, Dries a bone in about two seconds. Lunatic won't be troubling the women of this island no more. Quite a story. I like to think so. Richard Thorncroft does something for somebody else. Pow! A romantic theme from David Holmes. The music here is nice. Yeah. Well, we chatted about the kind of music that Richard might um, enjoy, uh, or, or sort of be almost his romantic theme. You know, being exotica music from the. 60s and yeah. a bit James Bondy actually, because so, yeah. I think in his in his heart of hearts he's like James Bond. <laughs> Speaking of James Bond, here comes here comes the here comes uh, Blofeld. <laughs> <laughs> Bloated felt. Here comes um, here comes the totty. Comes a bit of bit God. of eye candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to put something in for uh, you yeah, know you people to sort of go up at. A, you know, the, this was. Women um, into the audience. This was because it was raining. They went, it's going to rain in five minutes. So we had, this is all one shot. This is two cameras, one there, one there, and uh, one shot take. Yeah, before it started raining. Because the whole scene was supposed to be outside, but um, is this interesting? Um, so weather, sure. do you want to hear about the... Never not talk sure. about the weather. There's one thing you must never do. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather in a commentary. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody will listen. <laughs> I think well, I'm going to... I think commentaries are like. I've never I, heard no, those. I need to. I need to listen better. to them. They're great. Yeah. This commentary is better than the film. <laughs> it will be what I will be remembered for. <laughs> yes, his grizzly bear is one of... The, he won an Oscar for commentary for grizzly... Grizzly, Grizzly man. man. Grizzly man, not Grizzly Pop for the commentary? Yeah. No. no I'm making that. Oh, that's that's good. I actually have not heard the commentary today. He probably doesn't do commentaries. Jessica Barnes, Jessica Barnes, she's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, Again, she does a lot of very, very subtle, um, very, dis very powerful looks that sort of destroy me. Yeah. <laughs> she had the measure of you, didn't she, basically? <laughs> she did, yeah. I tried to chat to her a bit, and um, I found myself just floundering. <laughs> Yeah. In real life, um, you, you sort um, of look at me like, "Why are you talking about that?" Or yeah. what are you trying to? What? She's what so you young and you're so old. You know, she's like, "Why is this granddad? <laughs> Who is he? What's he talking about?" Yeah. This guy, okay. This guy used um, to make yeah, she was very. Uh, he did his own stuff. She was fearless, totally, and uh, no, brilliant. no, you naughty liar! Last you time. never did. Not lying. You Good. never did any. You naughty, naughty. Bit of banter here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Good we went on for ages. Yeah, just keep it rolling, Sean. We just we've we've, we've got something here. The gold will keep on coming. <laughs> <laughs> Threw in some Gary Baldy material and <laughs> again a sort of a food snack based comedy yeah. of, of, of Simon Farnham. The food, the food, <laughs> the food <laughs> motif. Yeah. What are you doing here? He said you were at the Grand. Oh, I can answer that. He's uh, come for some fan mail. I'm getting a fan mail. Oh, I'm really touched. Oh yeah, there's uh, some in the garage. I'll go and fetch it for you. This was a bit of um. Don't go getting back to I'm kidding. Look at him. He's so fat now. He's a mess. Oh. I thought I might cut that. It was sort of a bit big that, but it gets a laugh. You know, it's yeah. a comedy. Yeah, yeah. Clive. Clive. It's good. It's good Turkish humour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, from from uh, the Dutch. Yeah. The Dutch yeah. master. <laughs> Such a nudist. <laughs> Yeah, you really could have been naked in that scene. It would have been quite yeah. naturally. But that would have raised the uh, yeah. raised the rating, probably. It would have gone through the roof, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? But it might have, you know, done a bit better at the cinema. <laughs> Here's a car. This is why I love this car. You have this car. I do have this car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do. I had it written into my contract because they were only paying paying us in sort of uh, coffee. I got all the dolls. Of myself. You got the dolls. And Sam got the car. And I got the car and as much coffee as we uh, as we could sustain in the three weeks it took us to film. And in the background, you see pictures of Simon on the left. There. Yes, these are all um, these Not are all that real. One, but the other ones, the action shots of you, you you've got in your office, yeah. haven't you? And you tell your daughter that yes, that's they're true. Uh, they're real. I, ha I have them in my office and I. She comes in and goes, Dada. And I go, yep, that's Dada um, fighting a shark. <laughs> and uh, that's Dada um, oh. uh, putting out a blaze. And she goes, oh, Dada, so strong. She's going to be yeah. so disappointed in you when she grows up. She is. She's going to think I'm just a That'll liar. That'll be the first, the first thing that goes, like, you, you didn't fight a shark. Yeah. What yeah. else is not true about you? Yeah. <laughs> is that your real hair color? I go, yeah, that's me hanging off a building. Uh, and um, I think there's a lion yeah, yeah, behind, behind, yeah. <laughs> that's me taming a lion. Yeah. yeah, but those things maybe you you've done the right thing because they'll go deep into the subconscious. You won't know why, but she'll think yeah. you're some incredible she'll hero. She just remembers. They do right. anyway, obviously, your kids. Yeah, but that can't hurt. Yeah, when she when she's about nine or ten and realizes what Photoshop is, <laughs> a lot of change by then. It'll be you know. Yeah. Some You'll get a phone call or a or go, yeah. you'll get a Skype. Or I guess Skype. Hologram Dad, image from. You're her. such a liar, man. Well, I'm at the top of my physical game, sir. Yeah, well, you're hiding it really well these days. Yeah, don't make me unleash the Jinga. I'd love a garage like this, you know, an office garage. Oh, it's great, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? There's sort of some, DV, there's some sort of, uh, sort of hard to do in London. Don't read it all at once. I've got a sort of tiny, tiny room. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to. You have to move to the Isle of Man, basically. Yeah. Here's the flowers motif that isn't quite um, work as well as I hoped it would. You've got to sort of track the flowers through. They come from Moncrief and then go to you and then Clive. Mm. And then that immortal line, yeah. Which and then you go. Moncrief's written it, but it's quite hard to follow that through. Yeah. Maybe if you're watching this, you'll have seen it a few times and, and got it. Fine, or you go. All oh, right, that's it. what that is. Yeah, that I'll cheap. laugh about that. Yeah, I'll laugh about that. I'm later. Certainly going to laugh about that when I see it next time. <laughs> 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 no one know what the hell you you meant by it. <laughs> I'm going to say no to that. Joke. <laughs> I like the. I really like this. Is I, I love him. I, I yeah. Fucking deals. He's really got it wrong, hasn't he? He's great. He's <laughs> <laughs> he really is. A, he's sort of quite with nail or something. Like he's totally yeah. in the zone of mm. a sort of wrecked man, a man whose brain has gone to pieces. All right. <laughs> he's the only one who's sort of worse than you, isn't he? In yeah. Way, yeah. You know, as a human. Yeah. He's really just gone. Like pitiful. Yeah. Jammers Club here. This this wasn't as I imagined it, but it looks oh, it's pretty amazing, doesn't it? These cagoules. Here he is, chiselled. Chiselled. He turned up after a juice diet and he'd been working out for about a year. Yeah, and he had a really... really we didn't uh, recognise him any time. No, he looked uh, very different and uh, mm. yeah, very good, actually, compared to <laughs> me, uh, which was yeah. quite nice. Uh, yeah. He was very sleek and... Um, yeah. It was a sort of unveiling of him, wasn't it? It was an unveiling of the new Steve Coogan. Yeah, yeah. So sort of slimline. Steve Coogan, Super Mark version. Two. Mm, I certainly do. The heat I'm about to generate. <laughs> <laughs> His glasses. DVD release, and that's where you come in. That's a sweet angle. A sweet angle. So too. 
So what do you think? Are, are we in business? Has he, got a, has he hasn't got a, an earring, has he? No. Has he got an earring? No. Uh, He's right. I see, yeah. Let's do it. Let's He's got a little stud yeah. in there, isn't he? All right. <laughs> Notice that. Thanks, Coco. Coco. Hey. I like the way you do business. Oh, wow. <laughs> Poor old Moncrief. Before we uh, <laughs> seal this puppy, is there anything else you want to run by me? Pitiful yeah. fellow. I mean, nothing uh, that you might have said uh, publicly. <laughs> you called me a stinking ham on Wogan with the emotion. Although we don't see Wogan because Wogan denied his uh, mm. use of his <coughs> image. Yep. Um, but we don't hold that against. Well, he's a great, he's no, a great he Wogan, amazing. and I just want to take this opportunity to say <laughs> they were really like, really love Wogan and um, everything about all over this island. I don't need to go to oh, you. I'm sure you're inundated with requests for the greatest. This was we loved these little uh, adverts. We had a few of these. We had the thromby socks we filmed. Mm. This one um, for tumpers. We always had this. We thought this was a funny idea for. I think at one point they might have been in continent pants or something. Yeah, but that, no, it's... <laughs> yeah, something funny. You're finished. You fucked off to Hollywood 25 years ago because some L.A. windbag said you were going to be the next Burt Reynolds. Not even the next Burt Quok. That was what we had for a while. Yeah. And then we thought no one's going to know Burt Quok. You're living in a dream world. <laughs> was. I'm living a dream and world. then Burt Quok yeah. died. This is a dream world, Did he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. None of this is real. This is not real. It's me interacting with some foliage again. <laughs> you just can't help yourself. <laughs> and prostitutes. <laughs> You're a joke, Richard. <laughs> the L.A. sort of story. That would be an interesting chapter in Richard's life. I think. Yeah, we had a... For a while we had... We we wrote flashbacks that in that we had flashbacks to Richard's life in L.A. Mm. And I think... Um, Sorry. The story was Richard went to L.A. and... Um, on, at the behest of an agent, an agent sort of came and courted him and, mm. and um, promised him the world. Promised him the world, and Richard packed his bags, went to LA, and turned up at his house and had shot himself. Yeah, the agent was the there. agent. And uh, Richard was sort of left stranded and <laughs> turned into this sort of thing, just a sort of drug addled. <laughs> yeah. The music career he had, I mean, we, we always liked that sort of thing, didn't we? Sort of yeah. Dennis Waterman had a music career. and Don Johnson. Don Johnson. These sort of actors that go, you know what, I'm a pretty good actor and I like music. <laughs> I don't see why I can't have a, have yeah. a career. That's me. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that was me. I played that, the part of the hatted man. Yeah. Uh, and Jack filmed that, didn't he? We filmed that um, oh, that yeah, little running black around and white night. montage. Um, yeah, yeah. That was just that was just us messing about with the camera. Sorry, Sean, but uh, can I get can you? I get you myself? Yes, um. If you ever set foot on this island again, you're going to jail. Is this about your wife? What? We've never. What were you drawing from here in your hangover? You bit the boost tour. The tour. <laughs> the boost tour. The first and the second wow. boost tours. Yes, um, many a, many a hangover. Um, one of the one of the you know the few benefits of actually stopping drinking is is, is no more hangovers. Yeah, um, but that's not many. This was now. a this was this was a very hard scene for me to get through. You might, I say, I'm sort of half laughing here because our DOP um, David Luther is German. And he went, this is the second take, on the first take, he went, In Holland they call this, uh, this end of this penis, they call it uh, the acorn. And it really made me laugh. Like, that. he went to the bell, what do you call it? The bell end, is it? And I went, yes, we call it the bell end. And he went, well, in Holland they call it the acorn, you should call it that. And so I kept doing this, and then Green Robin kept laughing, because I was going, Holland they call this the acorn? I just found it so funny. Um, and of course, we had two seconds to film it, and there was going, come on, come on, stop loud, come on, we haven't got time for this. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so this was quite a fun, but it was a fun, um, I did all the... Uh, uh, the drawings. The drawings, that's all my artwork. I think I asked you to redo something. Mm, the acorn, the bed the end. The acorn needs to be redrawn. You didn't, yeah, you... 
you know, I said, can you do something? I think, I don't know what it was. I think initially it was a bit, everything was a bit sort of, I don't know, actually. I don't know. There wasn't enough of it on there initially. It was like, go, I said, go do some more or something. Yeah, I think, I think our department had just put sort of one, one bell end on. And yeah, to be fair, rest. that's probably what was in the script, you know. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> we went a bit further. When you see the, the actual car, you think I need a bit more. Yeah, bye, Richard. Nice to see you. So this this was actually a reveal of this is where he tells that, that um, the, about the daughter. It wasn't supposed to be between us two. It was supposed to be between me and um, Pat, but uh, uh, she, ran out, time on that she ran out of time, so she wasn't there. And uh, so we did it with Robin, which wasn't as good. But let's not let's not worry about that now. It's done. What's done is done. <laughs> Toby's still asleep. Mm. Uh, okay. Well, we we got our man. There's Douglas Bay. The beauty of the Isle of Man. Oh, it's splendor. We did like it, didn't we? We actually enjoyed it as a place. Yeah. People ask us why the Isle of Man. Um, well, we thought about Jersey for a while, but it was too close to Bergerac. Bergerac, yeah. Sort of Guernsey. Yeah. We didn't want to invite too many. And then we looked at the Isle of Man, and I'd forgotten about the Isle of Man. Tony Way existed. Tony yes, Way, there's uh, Tony Way. Fine, another f fine actor we used yeah. really well. Really gro grossly underused in this. Um, that was his line. That he missed his line. <laughs> talked over it. <laughs> <laughs> but he got a day out of the Isle of Man, and you know. Um, but yeah, we googled the Isle of Man. We went. Our producer went. What about the Isle of Man? We set it on the Isle of Man. And we googled it, and immediately. All these, they've got this three-legged sort of um, coat of arms thing with us. Coat of legs. Coat of legs with three. And all this sort of iconography, this strange, it was like the Wicker Man. It sort of reminded us of, you know, it had its own unique sort of flavour. And it's somewhere that you don't know much about, other than people used to go there on holiday yeah. and were told they were going abroad and... I suppose they were in a way, but it wasn't really. I remember way. being, yeah, you know, <coughs> sort of conned into going there, thinking I was going to Spain, <laughs> and uh, went, yeah, we're going on holiday, we're going abroad to the beach, are we? Yeah, and it's actually the wrong way. It's going colder yeah. towards sort of island. Breaking news at the Lassie Wheel: suspected murderer Paul Melly has escaped from Greenborough Hospital and taken himself hostage. The public are warned not to approach Melly as he's both armed and dangerous. Give me my heart! He's escaped. <laughs> it's a coincidence that he's that, that's on TV at the time. But, you know, you can allow you allowed yeah. a couple of coincidences. Like you're that. allowed. You're only allowed two, one, coincidences, two coincidences in every film, in any movie, in any narrative. For the bald man who really did do the murder. He filmed this in uh, New York. New York. That little clip on it on his camera, on it in the camera on his phone. Yeah. With the body. He was doing a play in uh, New York. Mm. He had the yeah. um, international actor that he is. Yeah. See you soon, my horn. Yeah, we sort of sent him his uh, his costume over, and he filmed it there. Give me the tape. Why? What are you going to do with it? I'm going to take it to the chief. I'm going to show This you rubber you. doll, this little doll in the corner, is his secretary. I got a better idea. Um, but we mistakenly called her Barbara, which is actually my mum's name. <laughs> and um, uh, and actually, my dad is called Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff and Barbara. Jeff and Barbara were not very well represented um, mm. in this uh, in this movie. <laughs> Here we go. Five's my secretary. Yeah. Twenty-five years I've been here <laughs> since you, you asshole, walked out on me. Comes a time in an actor's life. Okay, he's gone. Mm. This is one of our most dramatic scenes. This is where some real mm. acting goes on. Mm. And then you Should have shown this scene to Cam. This would have got mm. into this little scene. Would have gone, oh, really right, gritty. so it's, uh, it's like nil by mouth, yeah? <laughs> it's uh, one of it's these... It's a caravan, it's, it's grimy. Why is he putting on... Uh, lost dreams. On the <laughs> ignore that, I ignore that. It's, that's nothing. Yeah, this is too silly. <laughs> this film is ridiculous. It's not it, coming it's, to it's Cannes. Com it's comedy, we're not... Uh, Take it to <laughs> Belfast. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think, OK? Things aren't that bad. We open to so many festivals. Oh, Belfast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dublin. Hmm. You're this time. You owe me. 
No. We need to take a step back here, Jeff. A mentally fragile young man is calling for my help. Yesterday you said he was a retard. Maybe I've seen a few things since then, Jeff. Maybe my eyes have been opened. What are you talking about? I'm a father, Jeff. I've sired a daughter. <laughs> sired a daughter. <laughs> we always liked that. That was, uh, yeah, it's sort of a little, it's sort of a D plot, isn't it? Or an E plot. <laughs> it's just a nice to, to have a man who who thinks he's changed, thinks he's grown, yeah. because he's got a he's got a daughter, and, and is very sort of poetic about his own yeah. growth. Um, is is always uh, amusing. I think it was a storyline we. Um, I think it's from Heat or something. Uh, I know Al Pacino's oh. always. He's got a problem with his daughter, and yes. he's always shouting. And he doesn't spend enough time. Yeah, yeah. Along with her, and you sort of thought that would be a nice sort of thing, sort of neglectful father. Yeah, yeah. But he's wrong because he doesn't doesn't have one. Oh God. The building behind me here. Um, a very angry man lives there. Um, was not happy that we were filming here, and was calling the police quite often throughout, really? throughout the day. <laughs> yes. Did the police? Yep. Did the police come? I wasn't here that day. Uh, they were. He was reporting us to the authorities all the time, and I, I was sort of. They protect you from it as an actor, you know. But you, yeah. I thought could hear sort of commotion, and I was going, what, "What's happening? Oh, nothing. Nothing is fine. Uh, would you like a cake or some tea, or you know?" So they they try not to uh, if they're you know doing their job. But I did find out there was a very angry... Yeah. He was looking out the window with binoculars and making uh, sort of notes, so very sort of theatrically, you know, making notes yeah. about what was going on. And <laughs> <laughs> the locals were a little bit um, perplexed by what, what we were doing. I think they were worried we were taking the... Was that, uh, yeah. What, what are you filming? What are you filming? Uh, it's called Mind On. What's that? Well, it's the film... Um, it's set in the Isle of Man. All right, taking a mick, are you? Or uh, one I had was, what are you filming? Um, this film, Mind on never heard of it. Oh, yeah. And we go, well, that's, brilliant, that. that's because... We haven't we've, made it. We're yet. filming it. We're never, never heard of it. it. Never heard of it. Must be a load of rubbish. <laughs> well, why don't you wait till we're finished <laughs> and then watch it and maybe you'll see. <laughs> yeah. The Laxi Wheel here, a uh, oh, enormous piece of machinery. Um, well, this is about... It these... was raining quite off. We had to sort of completely... Yeah, the rain here is really... We kind of lost. We lost a day here, didn't we? We lost yeah. our minds here. Never weather. talk of the weather. What did I, I say earlier? I told you look, about look, this. Look at the raindrops on his. <laughs> Do not draw no, attention Werner, to continuity. I'm just saying. Look at the raindrops, and then look. The sky's, the sky's blue. That's what they're looking at. Oh, the weather's <laughs> all right. Um, the Laxi. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a big old water pump from the zinc. Mines from the zinc era. The zinc era, <laughs> not the Iron Age. So the that wheel, age. that wheel there, pushes an arm and it, and it brings the water up from the old zinc mines. Or it used yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was there was a little sort of tour, wasn't there, down this mine? Did you do that? The tour? Did you go down it, down some sort of mine, uh, or, or did Sean or something? Yes, in the well, recce, yeah. And they said that, you know, it, it would take you like three hours to get down, or then three hours to get back up, or something ridiculous. To work, yeah. Uh, to work, yeah, and you would go down this long. Or an hour each oh, way. Or terrible, um, yeah. Uh, really terrible working conditions. We would remind each other of this when we were sort of complaining about the, the rain and <laughs> the fact that our sandwiches were a bit cold or something. You, know. you go, it could be worse. It could be zinc miners. <laughs> Take three hours to get to work. Work a twelve-hour day and three hours to get back. No, no, no. I mean, that literally, if you did fall into that, it would crush you flat as a yeah. pancake if you fell yeah. into that mechanism. So that's yeah. real danger there. And, and people say that acting isn't dangerous, but it is. It's one of the most yeah. dangerous professions a human being can undertake. I mean, look at that, you know. That's, uh, that's me. There's no, there's no harnesses. There's nothing there. That's me. This is Steve's This is Steve's torso. Torso there. A lot of um, the budget went on the uh, CGI mm. to, to flatten It's actually his an action out. man's torso, which has been photoshopped in. <clears throat> yeah, he insisted on that. That was in his contract. But he is an exec producer, so there's nothing we could do really. <laughs> um, yeah, that whole sort of the whole laxy wheel thing is. The, a lot of these shows would have the finale or the or a, or a big set piece at, yeah. at one of the tourist spots. You know? Yes, because they were a kind of disguised advert for the. Um, uh, for, for the location as a tourist resort or something, yeah. so they would, the show itself was. We thought with with the show that Mindhorn that it had been a 
um, a sort of sponsored by the tourist board of the Isle of Man, so that it would have to incorporate landmarks in every episode. Um, mm. So that's why it sort of made sense for You're coming with me. for the Kestrel to choose this location. Yeah, because yeah. usually, like in Bergerac, you'd have there'd be some scene at um, you know an observatory. Mm. And and they'd go. Um, you shouldn't be here threatening lives. This is where people come to observe the nature, sky, nature, and, and nature. wildlife, of which there is so many varieties. <laughs> the zoo, which is, has Guernsey, has such a varied <laughs> bird life. Yeah, that's what people come here for. Where not is, not where to is take he? people hostage. Where is he? Is that the Argyle Lighthouse? What the one that's surrounded by luscious grounds? The oldest lighthouse in the northern hemisphere. <laughs> That's right. So what's he doing there? Having a nice look at the... Having a nice lunch in the tea shop? <laughs> no. Tasty. There's, there's the sheep again. There we are. There you will see the sheep motif again <laughs> coming to life. The eye of the, the sheep. Eye of the sheep. Um, the distended pupil. The goat. Yeah. <laughs> Tumbling. This is real, just real. This is uh, all real. A man out of shape. An actor out of shape coming together. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, people say, the, "What is the Isle of Man? Look at that craggy, beautiful mm. rock." This is Melly's first scene. This was Melly. And Russell came up and he went, "You're going to do it like that?" And he went, "Yeah." And he went, "Okay." This chap's a local <laughs> Isle of Man chap. He is. Um, I've forgotten his name. He's I'm a very teacher. sorry, but he's nice. He's, um, he was a local good, drama it? teacher. Oh, that was it, yeah. yeah. Here's a Thromby Socks ad. Even a short walk can take its toll on the lower legs. That's why I use Thromby Socks. Jeffrey Moncrief, who I will kill! You can never this is very funny, you, this little improvised bit you did. You um, filmed this on your phone, I think, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. It was a pickup day and we went... Let's just go in the garden and um, yeah. film that. Through the door and uh, and say, um, hey, Pete, old buddy, how are the DVD sales going? Because of course, your mind on is finally released today on. on a bit of to you. Yeah. Um, actually, could you stop filming now? Because I think I might be about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> just so not about to cry. <laughs> He's like just really, yeah, not bothered. Here's a great Hank of the Wind. People love, you know, you know they, they love this song. You wrote this song, <laughs> Julian wrote this song. And it's, yes. it's a fantastic song. Mm, yeah, it's uh, kind of like his catchphrase, wasn't it? Um, yeah. This this was an idea, We this was another sort of ring-fenced. Oh, oh, when did this come, this thing about? It was actually, no, it was a bit later. We had this... Uh, one of the challenges we go how do you keep him in his suit you know that was the com yeah. comedic thrust was getting this actor back to the island and he wants to put his suit on him because we thought we that why would he do this uh, we and we thought at one point we were talking it's just it's like he has to be glued in somehow to his suit and we yeah we went can we we went, glue, oh. how can we glue him into his suit and yeah. then we went well we've got a madman <laughs> why doesn't he <laughs> yeah. sort of glue him in with super glue and I think initially we went, oh, he glues his wig back on. And then, yeah. and then we went, well, what if his wig fell off in the sea and he puts this strange Afro thing on? Yeah. Um, so this is him making him look like a doll, basically, with his muscly arms. And yeah. It's a great um, outfit. Yeah, we had fun with that. Uh, Susie Harmon. Yeah. Dr drawing on the abs. Yeah. Um, and those sort of silky trousers, What? where did they... Yeah, they were sort of lycra or something. Um, and the, 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 the tape was, I had to be taped into it every time we did a scene, obviously. Um, yeah. And, um, I mean, okay, it's not zinc mining, but it was it was painful. But, you know, down... And it was painful to get out of it. When they were down the zinc mines, they would look to each other and go, at least we're not taped into a yeah. suit. <laughs> you what? Yeah, actors, they get taped into suits. What? what all day? Yeah. They have to play former versions uh. of themselves. You're joking. And they have to say lines, people tell you, what? Nothing, you know. There's another metals mentioned there. John. John. Sorry, John. You lost your marbles. You got fixated with me in some weird, creepy way, which I don't even want to get into right now. You think I'm here to rescue you? <laughs> He's getting his face there. Look at his face. The slow dawning. Yeah. Paul Melly, wanted in connection with the murder of Katya Lipinski, is also presumed dead. Melly, 32, is believed to have a mental age of nine. Who's going to claim my name? Nobody. 
There's yeah. no evidence. We had a tape. Again, art department had a field day with this, with this, uh, both of them. With this place. Both of them. What do you mean, both of them? Yeah, I made a copy of the tape. You taught me that. Always make a copy. Well, where's that? Mine. I'd like that. Well, not, I don't know where that is. You're not mine, Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Well, well, the mine hole annual. The annual, yeah. Because I used to have all the annuals. Of, uh, Did you have a six million dollar man? Yeah, annual? no, I had a six million dollar annual and and the uh, mat and the doll, quite a lot. And, the, and a car. I had a James Bond car. The uh, yeah, the Aston Martin. Oh, I had the Aston Martin with the with the shield popped yeah, up at the back. Yeah, the back and, windscreen. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. And something came out of the lights at the front as well, didn't they? Bullets or uh, uh, yeah, missiles or something maybe. The recorder belt, the truth powder. Yeah, yeah. We liked the idea that the the truth powder bl blind uh, blinded these um these teenagers in Whitby. Yeah, because they were often the health and safety they had it was pretty bad. Was pretty bad in those days. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I remember having like an ET compass. Right. Yeah. An yeah. ET. An ET uh, flick knife. I had an ET. <laughs> I had an ET. <laughs> Flick knife, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had an yeah, ET a, lunchbox. Had a Willy Wonka bayonet. <laughs> <laughs> they really didn't um, go in for health and safety <laughs> till about 1989. I think mm. it was the 90s they started getting worried about that sort of yeah. stuff. Richard, wow! Don't ask. Thank God you're alive. Where's Melly? He's in a cave somewhere. He made a copy of the tape and he's hidden at a pass. It's sort of a cave, but it's also sort of looks like a multi-story car park. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was a strange location. That one, but, uh, it's a, it's a, <laughs> but Peter Francis did did his damnedest to, to create the magical lair of. of I Melly. think it was supposed to be a bunker, like a, yeah, like a nuclear, yeah, 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 nuclear yeah. bunker or something. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what it was in my head. Which leads into uh, out of that sort of gap mm. in the bridge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's the tunnel. We we like the idea of a tunnel system beneath the island, which perhaps we could have. Well, it's because originally we thought it was set on Guernsey, which had n tunnels made by the Nazis. Yeah, yeah. And the Isle of Man didn't have any Nazis. I mean, there probably are some Nazis on, <laughs> on yeah, there now. There's a, there's a smattering. There's always a smattering. <laughs> um, but um, they didn't dig the tunnels in the war, so we just thought there's some tunnels from the yeah. zinc. The zinc miners trying to escape, probably. That's yeah, yeah, be, wouldn't yeah. They could have used the bike to get away, you stupid perp. Some great acting here by Essie. She's just just amazing. Yeah. Just lent the whole thing a real gravitas and bit of bit of dignity really. Yeah. And also that someone like this could 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 in some part of a heart love Richard is is gives him so much as well. Gives him a bit of gives him dignity, doesn't it, in some way? In a sort of isn't it? He, yeah. Even in the midst of this scene, you yeah. sort of feel maybe maybe one part of him had a had, had sort of nobility back back, mm. back in the day. It was a small piece. Is there any any left? Is there an ember of of it rekindled? I mean, this is the great <laughs> irony of this is what we sort of the character's journey, you know, was from lies to truth. So now now we can see the truth, but he's sort of in the worst place of his life, really. But he's at least he's coming from a truthful. He's now mm. he's now been enlightened. Yes, but he's in this predicament. Uh, the sort of the, the idea, all this pretension's gone, but he's what left like this. Come sit down. It's always sort of one of my favourite bits when she sort of views this that figure. Mm. There's a bald man. Cats. He's tiny cats. He's got cats on his shoes. I've seen them. Not real cats. False cats. Tiny false cats on his shoes. Essie comes from a None from Tasmania. This is real. It's all real. Is she? Yeah. yeah. So from an island, strange oh. island, uh, uh, yeah. off uh, Australia. The mm. So we uh, know what it's like to, Calm down and, and to, be, to be trapped on an island. The island culture, yeah. Let's talk about, about us. Us? There is no us. I blew it. I walked out. The only thing that ever meant anything to me. You. There's some powerful acting here. From, Since I left you, here. my life has been really quite bad. <laughs> the music it's kicks right. in. <laughs> Leaving you. Was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> Punctured. That's called a cookie cutter. The puncturing of a, of a. This was. We had this sort of motif of gardening equipment. Oh yeah, yeah. Sort of Clive, just this sort of laid-back Burke who just spends all day gardening in his underwear. 
Regal. Where's my car? Don't tell him, Clive. He took it for the parade. What's going on? Stay away from him, Jasmine. His brain's come loose. Whatever happens next, I want you to remember two things. One, I'm innocent. Two, we've got to talk about this rather than <laughs> just watch it. Um, we do, yeah, we should talk about this. In the commentary, must always talk about what's happening and not just watch. I try not to just watch. These are all a p- load of porno mags. This is an idea that... Um, Yes. Clive in his garage in his man cave has these sort of porno mags. Mm. Porno mags quite, are quite a thing of the past, really, though. I suppose. Uh, yeah, it's all, it's, it's all yeah. internet now, isn't it? Yeah. But um, and also the letters from Richard. Um, he's a bad man. It's quite an awful thing to do, really. But you know, you like Pat. This was the. Uh, oh, this is all these, yeah. Where was the, the this carnival? This was a Peel. Peel. That's this was an this was um interesting. It was an, a- an actual carnival when this unravels that we uh, we sort of we oh, hijacked hijacked. Yeah, we sort of scheduled the filming to coincide with this carnival, and we just sort of jumped on the back of it. So all what you're about to see is is real carnival action. <laughs> And this is the this is where you see some of the power of Nicholas Farrell, because mm. he really is. Um, mm. He's great, and he's even in a ridiculous wig. You know, you know, he can sort of <laughs> <laughs> he can sort of be quite he's chilling. He's brilliant. I love him. He's chilling. That's sort of sort of a Donald Trump sort of figure, isn't he? Really, with his with his strange hair. Mm. Well, somebody um, we watched in a test screening. One of my mates went. Um, I mean, did you get the plot with him, the mayor, and what he's doing? Went, yeah, he's killing people because he's bald. <laughs> and I went, what? He went, he's killing people who know he's bald, right? And I went, no. <laughs> but that was before we sort of you know, we changed a few bits so that, so, that it did, so that it didn't look like that. Although that is a good sort of that'd be a good um, plot for Mindhorn the show. Yeah, you know, someone who's killing people who find out that he's bald. <laughs> He wanted to tell me something. I'm a hair model. Mm. Anyone finds out about this. <laughs> yeah. What connects all these people who have been murdered? So yes, this is um, the Peel Parade. Neil Edmund. Neil Edmund, there he is. He's brilliant. Supplying I, a, a, a yeah. long stream of hilariously mundane observations. <laughs> Incredibly mundane. He's Did brilliant. we get permission to show all these people? I hope so. Um, I do too. I think we did. Manana Man. <laughs> the giant. Yeah. Uh, but this is really the um, this is the real parade, you know. It's, yeah. Um, that's a real kipper stand. No, that's an actor. Um, he was brilliant. We just let. That's Neil. We just all day he just did this commentary, <laughs> and occasionally we filmed him. Yeah. Um, but Neil, I used to I used to do Edinburgh shows with Neil. Did like you? In, yeah, in the old days, we were all yeah, old pals. And Is that where we met? I can't remember where we actually met, Simon. Me and you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we did meet in Edinburgh uh, briefly. Yeah. It was back in the old drinking days. So we yeah. I can't quite remember it very well, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, was a guy... Yes, it was there, The yeah. guys in the crowd said something weird. Oh, got him. He was called RC Dad. Oh, yeah, that was his character. <laughs> <laughs> and we had this bit. It was funny. He was... <laughs> He was supposed to go um, at the real mind horn. You, he's supposed to go. Uh, he doesn't even look like mind horn. <laughs> and then, and then you go. Uh, I am mind horn, you Burke. Yeah. But he kept saying, he doesn't even look like RC, <laughs> RC Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we went. That's your character name. You're not supposed to say. Oh, sorry. And and cut, go again. He doesn't even look like RC Dad. Stop saying your character name. And then it got cut. So if you're watching this... Uh, oh, and here we so, are. So this is the big stunt. So I so, said... Simon felt he could do this. I said I could do, do this. this I went, why don't I do it? It's just rolling a on a bonnet. Car. And then the stuntman went, why don't I take the first go? And he went through the windscreen. You can see it smash. Yeah. Bit of continuity there. He went through the windscreen with his shoulder. Yeah. And then... I watched him, he sort of hobbled off. Because as a stuntman, you can't 
you can't go, ah, oh, well, that really hurt. Yeah. Oh, I'll sit down for a minute. Because it's your job, you have to style it out. And he did actually hurt himself. So I went, do you know what? I won't, I won't do that. I did do this. I took that bullet, though. Um, everyone was just the peel, the parade, they were just going, we were these guys. <laughs> I think they just assumed it was a show. Yeah. Uh, that they'd missed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen this film, they're going, as they're in the film. I haven't seen this film. Sounds rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, there's Melly, he's finally in the show. Yeah. He's finally where he wanted to be his whole his, life. His Nirvana. Yeah. There was whales here. There was whales on that bit of sea there. Um... Did you notice the whales? You I didn't have acting. acting. Yeah, okay, I was yeah. sort of doing some what what is known as acting. Okay, uh, I was stood just off camera there with some binoculars, looking at the whales. Whale watching. And um, I think the mink, little mink whales. All oh, right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, did you not know they were just not behind noticed. you there? Did you not? No, we didn't notice. I did lean into Russell and go, Russell, and you went, "Do you mind? I'm doing some emotional." <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in a death scene. Yeah, but there's some minky. Yeah, whales. but there's some whales. If you just look, just out there, mate. Yeah, just stop this. There's a, there's some whales. Um, scene from Russell here. He's it is very it's sort of my probably my favourite bit. This is when um, uh, he brings it here. He brings it home. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. He, uh, all all the way from <coughs> the streets of Essex. His act he brings his acting. Um, this was a yeah we had this we had this from quite early on this sort of joke that's coming up. Well, it's the best fifteen minutes of my life. Um, Here's a copy of the tape. It's quite emotional. Often people sort of cry at, cry here. Did um, I? Were, were you crying? Mm. What, when oh, I, you were when I filmed it. You were in <laughs> uh, when so I watched you, it. When you were watching the, I'm talking about the whales. <laughs> I mean, um, yes. Give them a kiss, Angela. Do you cry at films? Um, E.T. I did, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Champ. Oh, yeah. Um, the Champ. Uh, Caddyshack. <laughs> um, Fletch. Fletch. Um, all the chase. All the chase movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's just say someone I used to know. <sighs> you poor deluded fool. I am Richard Thorncroft. Give some space to this moment and uh, let it breathe. On the commentary track. That you notice this during this end. scene? I'm uh, I'm wearing a uh, uh, tunic which uh, was actually given to me by a friend of mine. <laughs> but that was that was one of our favourite jokes when he opens his eyes after he's died. I didn't want to give it away beforehand. Although again, if you're watching this having not seen it, it's your fault. But um. That was one we uh, we worked around. Even when we said it in space again, we, we came back and did, you know, we were going to come back and do this because um, we like we like that joke. It seems to play. Look at the sunshine there. Never ever talk about the weather. <laughs> That's what happens with DVD commentaries, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like everything's really at the beginning, it's like fizzy, and then at the end, it's <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, yeah, watching okay. it. <laughs> and then it ends. Um, but I think this, see, there's a beautiful there's, there's a tourist video for, you know, The yeah, Art of Man. Yeah, yeah. Like what, you know, yes, we say things about limited gene pool, but look at the photography here. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, the the island comes off pretty well. It does. In, I mean, look at that. Uh, People film. go, I'll come down to that. Although what you don't see at this beach is there's a lot of flies around. Mm. Do you remember? Mm. So if you are thinking of visiting that beach, just take some uh, insect repellent. Yeah, well, you will be crawling with flies almost like <laughs> completely just head to foot. It's like a head to foot. You can't see them. The <clears throat> camera doesn't pick up flies. No, that's, flies, that's you can't some, see flies. You can't um, see <laughs> flies through. We had a special camera that where you couldn't see flies through. Turn around. Uh, they say that about rain, don't they? When when it's raining really hard, they go, "It doesn't come on. It doesn't pick up on the yeah. camera. And like you, there's, there's water running down your face and yeah. into your eyes, so it just looks like you're blinking and just having mm. I mean, I mean, some sort of fit." Oh. 
No! Patricia! You can see some whales in the distance. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> this is quite, this is quite moving. You really think she's, you know, dying here. That doesn't matter now. Clive hit them from now. What a wanker. I'm sorry that I didn't you. Yeah, we always sort of quite influenced by the sting here, weren't we? The film The Sting. Yeah, we got we got yeah, some of this from the sting, yeah. There's a scene at the end where they both they sort of shoot each other, I think. Yeah. Um it's not a straight lift, no, but no, uh, it's similar. Um um You're a bit like Robert Redford. A little bit. A little bit like and Robert Paul Newman combined. Without her I may um, as well be dead. Oh, oh, just a figure of speech. Why? Why? She does some powerful stuff. I like. I like this when she leans in here. There's my uncle, so I've got to clean up his mess. Family's. This was her actual haircut as well, wasn't it? Yeah. This wasn't character. This was real. She turned up with this sort of shaved yeah. strangeness. She was on holiday. She wasn't supposed to be working. She was like, "Oh, I was taking a break from work, and I was in my little shed." She lives in a shed in like <laughs> Illinois or something. <laughs> She's quite a uh, sort of um, hippie sort of type. And she went, I was on in my shed in Illinois, and I got the script, and I thought, I'll do this. <laughs> um, I think so that was the line that made her want to do it. Pretty cool. What? That line made her want to do it, she said. Oh, yes, it was, yeah. yeah. The mayor runs, ma yeah, runs, runs a man. Family family. Here it comes. There was nothing I could do. It was... Uh... There was nothing I could do. Nice working with you again. What's going on, Thorncroft? And there's my uncle, so I gotta clean up his mess. You can tell in this scene I'm thinking of the whales. I'm not quite concentrating. <laughs> um, that's a funny bit, but that's it. You see, look, I'm just looking at the whales. <laughs> <laughs> I should be doing more acting, really. Look. Sometimes your acting is so powerful that you, you sort of focus on sort of stuff in the surrounding area just to, to take it down from... Yeah. You will dominate a scene I, if you I, don't I, do that. I didn't want to steal this from you because yeah, I know yeah. this is your big finale. So you just sort of try to sort of get... Yeah. And here, of course, the big powerful... This is that one day, that two hours of capoeira that you <laughs> you put in. Mm. really pays off. Jinga time. What's this move called that you do there? Mm. <laughs> What's the, the name of the it? The cobra. <laughs> yeah. The uh, and and this and this one. That's the um, the f pelican. <laughs> uh, What's this one you do here? That is the lateral pelican. The the upper pelican. Um, that one. That's the. I'm moving between the. <laughs> It's a sort of ancient art uh, developed by slaves in South America, I think. Mm. Um, yeah. It's sort of a dance that was also self-defense. Mm. Developed in the favelas. Is you know, it? What's that? The, the favelas. What are they? The Brazilian uh, shanty towns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that I loved you so hard back then. I hope we can put us. This is a great, great reaction when he says he slept with his I wife. Helped at all. I was pretty wasted all those years ago. I don't even remember that night with your wife. What night with my wife? That's the spirit. The, um, oh my God, Richard, that was so brave. We had a, it's a miracle that you weren't shot. Had numerous endings. Uh, yeah, we had, we had, um, we had one that, that um, uh, where Moncrief <coughs> had this idea for a golfing detectives. Uh, for, for Richard and Pat called Fairway and Green and uh, uh, like after Mindhorn that's what they were going to do and then Richard went off to Hollywood and he couldn't do it and Moncrief was very bitter about not having done Fairway and Green mm. that's the end of the film so at the end of the film we were going to have this sort of um, you and Richard and Pat golfing and then um, somebody jumps out of the bushes and sort of fires a gun at them and you realise you're watching Fairway and Green and they go cut and they go, can I get a coffee, please? And can I get, you know. Mm. And it was going to be a bit like... Uh, <coughs> that was um, one. We had that one. We had, we had one. that one. 
One where Moncrief had opened a restaurant, a sort of detective uh, theme restaurant. That's right. Uh, um, selling sort of pizzas, like with the uh, different pizzas that were named after yeah. various detectives. The Burger Burger Rack. Burger Rack was going to be yeah. Burger, and there was. Um, was what was going to be called? Um, the Steakout. The Steakout. The Steakout. Good. So that was one, another ending we had. That was another ending. Um, what was another ending? Stuff, yeah. oh, we had one where you were talking, being interviewed, and going, yes, yeah, so I'm a family man now. Um, I live with Pat. Mm. Um, I'm loving my life away from the limelight. And you can read all about it in my autobiography. <laughs> and then it was, it was an advert for an autobiography. So you can probably see why we just decided <laughs> to end the film. Rather we than just got out quick, I think. <laughs> Gentlemen People usually laugh at that, Ridley yeah. Scott. They don't realise that Ridley... I think it's a joke. I think it's a joke. <laughs> it is not a joke. Uh, Ridley was involved. He, we couldn't keep him out of it. Yeah, we had to keep him. Can you, can, you, can you put an alien in the movie, Blads? Ridley, get out of the yeah. office. It, it Stop doesn't, interfering. It doesn't matter you're dressed as a, a, a cleaning lady. We know it's you. We know it's you, Ridley. Oh, come on, please. It'll ensure your box office success. <laughs> Ridley out. No, well, he, um, Luther. Luther, Peter yes. Francis. I'm just going to read them out. Yeah. Mark. Mark. Wonderful Mark. Even tempered. Mark. Mark did uh, Paddington. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Was involved yeah. With. And the Bush. And, and the Bush, Bush yeah. yeah. And uh, he's just been with us all the way. Never see him, though. He's always in his little room. Yeah. Editing. A bit like Ridley. You never see him, but he works hard. Mm. And then what we wanted here was. Um, the video to Handcuff the Wind, but we, uh, which I think is m hopefully on this DVD. Well, we'll have to change DVD. it. Off, but, I hope so. Um, um, but we wanted that to the top of the pops, but we didn't have time again, you know. So you can't have everything, you know. Um, can't handcuff the wind. Can't handcuff the wind. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people here I'm going to pretend I remember. Oh, Ben. Oh, uh, Do you remember Ben Frost? Frosty! The Frostmeister. <laughs> the Iceman. Yeah. Rachel Garlic, I do remember. She designed the, uh, oh. the album cover, actually. No, was she? Garlic. She did, she, David Mitchell was our electrician. Oh. David Mitchell, the uh, comedy actor for Pizza. Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. came he in and did, did a bit. He's Hello, another, boys. Another you want some... Uh, set. <laughs> I'm just going to plug this in over here, then. All right. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> <laughs> Driver Tim Ed Jim Edge. You remember Jim? Yeah, he was. Uh, what's this? Um, what's edge. this all about? Yeah, the Edge we used to call. Kerry him, Payne, the driver. Flash Transport. I remember him. Flash. Oh, no, Simon Fogg. Oh, grip. Foggy. Foggy. Always hung the out. Fogmeister. Uh, <laughs> um, ben Barker, Ronnie Barker's son. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Um. Is this you on guitar? Yeah. So you play all the instruments. Yeah, play. I'm like Stevie Wonder in that respect. Yeah. You, um, you're launching your solo career, aren't you? As I'd like to, yeah. Tom Croft. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, explore his back catalogue. Go on tour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it could be. It's interesting imagining what he what he did back in the day and what videos he made and mm. perhaps. The idea he made a sort of softcore erotic film. Like oh, like Wild Orchid. Yeah. Like, uh, nine and a half weeks. Like really ill-advised, quite low budget, but he went away to somewhere, sort of Italy or somewhere strange, and money was coming from weird places, and it sort of fell through, but they cobbled it together, and it really makes no sense, and it's got loads of yeah. sort of strange nudity, and he's sort of... And sort of lots of erotic food, sitting, like <laughs> eating chocolates and it pouring yeah. all down his face, <laughs> like melted chocolates <laughs> yeah. and oh, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Again, food is in it. Ollie Ralph there. Yes, Ollie Ralph, who... Uh, Father yes. of Bruno Mindhorn, so a character he wrote yeah. for Bush, uh, a kind of song he wrote, Bruno Mindhorn, was a surrealist yeah. sort of musical piece, and Simon heard the name Mindhorn and thought, this sounds like a detective. Yeah. So Ollie's the... So we owe, we owe Ollie, the Ollie that, for yeah. that. The, uh, Big time. The genesis of the name. 